So good morning, monitoring biodiversity with a bottle of water. When we sample seawater with our bottle of water, this water will contain fragments of DNA left behind of species that are present in their environment. This is called environmental DNA or eDNA. These water samples are then filtered and filter will collect the DNA fragments and DNA extractions are done from this filter. So I started this work by studying place. I studied how fast eDNA could be detected once a place was put in the aquarium and how fast eDNA was degraded once the place was removed from this aquarium. So in these plots above, you can see, sorry, the time on the x-axis and eDNA concentration on the y-axis. And when eDNA starts to increase and reaches a plateau after 16 hours, eDNA is degraded after 24 hours. From this data, we also derived the limit of detection, and now we can implement this method into the field. So for the field approach, we looked at place for two summer months and two winter months, showing that during the summer months, the eDNA concentration was higher than in the winter months, and it follows the migration pattern for place. We also did look at the blue jellyfish for four seasonal months for the same sampling stations, which shows that the eDNA concentrations were the highest in spring and the beginning of summer. Now, we could look at these patterns with qPCR in the lab for the species individually, but given that there are more than 2,000 species in our Belgian North Sea, this would be impossible. So it is therefore better to study multiple species at once, like for example jellyfish. So we developed a universal jellyfish DNA sequence called Primer that targets all jellyfish species in the North Sea and we sampled again along the nine different stations for four seasonal months. This data only shows us the absence or presence for jellyfish species, but it doesn't tell us which species are there. So to really monitor the jellyfish biodiversity, we have developed a new sequencing methodology that has the potential to be applied in the field. So for this methodology, we are using a new sequencing platform called the MinION. The MinION is a nanopore pocket-sized sequencer and it uses real-time sequencing. So you can look into your data the moment it starts sequencing and you sequence until it's sufficient. This monitoring device has also been used in, to monitor disease outspread, like Zika or Ebola, and it is even the first sequencer that's going into space. So here we used it in the first run of tissue samples from jellyfish and our universal jellyfish primer to see if it meets our needs. The two figures below show us that the majority of our data passes the quality criteria and that only a limit, little, limited amount of data should be discarded. On first glance, we were able to identify our jellyfish species, but we need to further analyze these data. Next thing is to test this with field samples for both fish and jellyfish, and then real-time sequencing can become a reality on Simon Steven. Thank you for your attention.